This is going to be a great meeting, and I want to thank uh, the Alliance for Retired Americans. They're doing the great work, grassroots work, that they are doing all over this country. I want to thank the great senators and members of the House for being here. I'm going to introduce them in a minute. I want to thank Social Security Works. Our DC, MoveOn.org, <laughs> campaign, the Campaign for America's Future, the Center for Community Change, the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, <laughs> the AARP, the AFL CIO. <laughs> Latinos for a Secure Retirement. The Paralyzed Veterans of America, AMVETS, AMVETS, and all the other groups. Yeah. We are bringing together, we're bringing together a coalition of veterans groups and senior groups and women's groups and trade union groups and civil rights groups that are not only going to save Social Security and Medicare, we are going to change America and do what the American people want. Today's meeting is pretty simple. We are sending a very loud message to the leadership in the House, to the leadership and members of the Senate, and to the President of the United States. And that message is pretty clear. At a time when the middle class is disappearing and when working families from Vermont to California are struggling to keep their heads above water, do not cut Social Security, Medicare, <laughs> Medicaid, and other programs. You want to do deficit reduction, and all of you know we have made significant progress in cutting the deficit in recent years. But if you want to go forward in deficit reduction, ask the largest corporations in this country who are making record-breaking profits to start paying their fair share. <laughs> We have more wealth and income inequality today than at any time since the 1920s. If you want to do deficit reduction, ask the top 1% who are earning all of the new income to start paying their fair share. Right. Before you think, before you dream, before you have any vision at all, of cutting any program that working families depend upon. Let's end the loopholes that allow corporate America and the rich to stash their money in the Cayman Islands and other tax havens. Now, all of you know that Social Security has not contributed a nickel to the deficit because it's funded by the payroll tax. And despite what you see on TV tonight, Social Security has not gone bankrupt. In fact, it has a $2.7 trillion surplus, can pay out every benefit owed to every eligible American for the next 20 years. Yes. Now, if we want to save Social Security, I know a way to do it. And I think all of us up here are in support of that way. You save Social Security not by cutting benefits to seniors who are struggling to stay alive on $15,000 a year, not by cutting benefits for disabled veterans. You save Social Security by lifting the cap. percent contribute the same percentage to the Social Security Trust Fund as do working people. Now let's be very clear. 
There are some folks out there who say, well, you know, this so-called chain CPI, it's just a little tweak. So let me tell you about what this quote-unquote little tweak is about. If you're 65 years of age today, by the time you are 75 years of age, you will be losing 658 $658 a year. Now that may be a tweak for some of the millionaires around here, but it ain't a tweak if you're living on thirteen dollars or $14,000. That is the difference between whether you live in dignity or not, whether you buy the medicine you need or the food you need. And if you are a disabled veteran, these cuts will mean tens of thousands of dollars during the lifetime of that veteran. And in this country, we are not going to balance the budget on the backs of men and women who lost their legs and their arms defending their lives. <laughs> now, you know why? You know why we're going to win this struggle? We're going to win this struggle because every single poll that I have seen tells me that the overwhelming majority of the American people are on our side. It is true that the big money interest in Wall Street want to raise the retirement age of Social Security to 70, and they want to cut all of the programs we depend upon, but the American people are clear. And what our job here in Congress in working with you, you have got to rally the grassroots, you have got to put pressure on members of Congress, you have got to tell every single member of the House and Senate from your state that if they choose to cut Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid, they do it at the peril of their reelection. And make that. <laughs>